Hello and welcome to day two of the 2019 edition of the Royal Manitoba Winter Fair at the Keystone Center here in Brandon, Manitoba. I'm Marshall Littlefield. On today's show, we'll feature show jumping, some prancing ponies, some tiny horses, and one of the longtime staples of the fair. Our Rick Thompson catches up with Doodles the Clown. But first, the theme here today at the Royal is 4-H Day. I'm here with Brandy and Candice on day two, 4-H day of the Royal Manitoba Winter Fair. So can you guys just chat with me a little bit about uh, why you think it's important for people to support events like the Royal here in Brandon? Well, I think there's just a lot of stuff going on promoting agriculture and so many activities for the youth here. And the 4-H booth has a lot to offer for the youth. And we're promoting the gardening challenge today. And yeah, it's a great program. That's awesome. Can you talk a little bit more about the gardening challenge? What, what is that? The gardening challenge is right here. Okay. So if you want to just move your little camera over there. So we're doing some kids get to start their seed and watch it grow. And there's different, different uh, growing times. So some have already ended and so new ones are starting. And so that's for any 4-H members can take part in that. It's a project to teach kids about growing and being sustain having sustainable agriculture. Awesome, that's, that's really cool. Uh, can you guys talk a little bit about uh, what 4-H stands for and how that sort of ties in here with you guys being here at the fair? Uh, 4-H stands for Head, Heart, Health and Hands and Learn to Do by Doing. It's important for uh, our youth to learn to do by doing and doing hands-on activities which 4-H provides. Um, you can see in agriculture, it is a very lot of a hands-on activity, a lot of hands-on. You know, farming is a hands-on. Beef, cattle, or I guess that's the same thing. Um, <laughs> you know, cattle, sheep, it doesn't matter what you're doing. It is a lot of hands-on activity. Awesome. Well, thank you both so much for coming and taking your time here today at the fair. So glad to have you guys here. Thank you, thank Marshall. You. <laughs>I'm here with Lynn for 4-H at the Royal Manitoba Winter Fair. Lynn, can you tell us a little bit about um, why you think it's important for people to support events like the Royal here in Brandon? I think it's important because it brings Manitobans from across the province here. I spent the night in Brandon and I talked to people from as much as 300 miles away who come to Brandon for this event because it offers so much. It offers you know, organizations like the uh, For Each Council, uh, the the Quack and Club, the Cluck and Quack Club. It offers lots of interesting demonstrations of of agricultural skills in terms of livestock and horses, and and uh, it offers things for families and for children to do. So I think it's an event that really brings Brandoners, Brandoners, is that what we are, Brandoners, and and Manitobans in general together in a really celebratory way. We're really celebrating our province at this event, and I think that's important for us as individuals, but it's also really important for organizations like 4-H. It's really important that we can be here too. So. Right on. And can you talk a little bit about 4-H's uh, mission statement and how that sort of plays into being here at the fair? Well, Manitoba's motto, of course, Manitoba 4-H motto, motto, or even the international motto, is to learn to do by doing. And when children come with their families here on 4-H Day Tuesday or any other day this week, they see people doing what they can learn to do. So they see people, well, a lot of our 4-H members are still in an agricultural situation, and they still, many of them, want an agricultural career. And here they see some of the potential. And they see other roles, not simply, not, you know, producer as well, but also other things that people can do in agriculture. And so I think it's for, for, the, for the children who come, the members who come to this day, it's really important for 4-H in terms of our mission and motto to, to encourage kids to explore their, their opportunities and to indeed learn to do by doing. Wow. Well, that's really amazing to hear. Thank you so much, Lynn, here on day two, 4-H day at the Royal Manitoba Winter Fair. 4-H plays a huge role in helping young people learn by doing, and it's a pleasure to see so many 4-H'ers here at the Royal. Another long-standing tradition at the fair is the Hackney Ponies. They show both in the day and evening performances. Bob Scott, one of the fair directors, has been involved with Hackneys for decades. We'll meet him and find out more about these prancing ponies. Yeah. 
I'm here with Bob for Hackney Horses here at the Royal. Bob, can you uh, tell us a little bit about the preparation process that goes into Hackney with the horses? Well, with these little guys here, we start working them, usually December, January. Uh, we get their feet ready, we have to get them, you know, perfect shape for this show. Uh, so lots of conditioning. Um, yeah, that's all I can tell you about them. Right on. Uh, how many <clears throat> Hackney horses have you got with you here at the fair? We brought five Hackney ponies this year. Uh, we have one pleasure pony, two harness ponies, and uh, two road ponies. And how does that compare to how much, how many you usually care to bring to events like this? Uh, usually we take one per class, uh, but this year we got a couple new ones, so we have more than more than enough this year. Can you go through the classes a little bit of the horses? Sure. Uh, in the harness class, uh, the ponies will pull a four-wheel cart. Um, you want lots of motion, front end and back. Uh, they'll have a couple different gates to go through. Uh, pleasure Pony will be a two-wheel cart with a basket. Uh, they're looking for manners. They gotta be able to walk, stand, back up. And then uh, this is this one here. She's one of our road ponies. It's kind of they have to have three different gates of speed, which some people call it a speed event. They go quicker, and obviously the crowd likes it. They can get cheering, and the announcer will yell at you to go ahead and pick which one you like and make as much noise as possible. And the louder people go, the faster these ones go. So. Awesome. And can you uh, just talk a little bit about what do you think um, what do you think Hackney brings to the fair that's unique about it? Well, not too many people have them. There's only a handful of people in Manitoba that have them. Uh, you can see more of them obviously out east or south. So yeah, there's only you know four, maybe five of us that actually own them in Manitoba. So they're, they're a rare breed. Um, so people that have never seen them get a chance to see them. Wow. Well, that's really good to hear. Thank you so much for coming out here and for giving us your time today. Yeah, not a problem. The Hackneys add a touch of show and fun to each performance here at the Royal. You won't want to miss that. Up next, we get a chance to showcase one of our feature nonprofits, Samaritan House, to talk about the many good works they provide to those in need in our community. I'm here with John for Samaritan House here on day two of the Royal Manitoba Winter Fair. John, can you tell us a little bit about uh, why you think it's important to support events like the Royal here in Brandon? Well, of course, the Royal has such a strong history, not only in Brandon, but in uh, southwestern Manitoba. And so I believe tradition is important and that we need to support events like this. Awesome. And can you talk a little bit about uh, Samaritan House's mission statement and how that sort of uh, ties in with the fair and how that uh, plays plays with that. Well, consistent with Manitoba's strong history of tradition, I believe is a desire to help those who are in need. And at Samaritan House, we're primarily known for two things. One would be our food bank, which is the second largest in Manitoba. We hand out about 2,000 hampers a month. And then also our safe and warm shelter. In addition to that, we do have second stage housing for women and families. Uh, we provide education and employment services. And I believe that the community wants to support causes like Samaritan House. And so it's important for us to be at events like the Winter Fair. Right on. And can you, speaking of uh, your food bank, I heard that the food from the Sunrise Breakfast yesterday was actually donated. Absolutely. So we're still waiting on a final total in terms of weight, but I believe it was fairly substantial. So we're very grateful for that. And we do rely on donation alone when it comes to food. So we can only give out what comes in. So again, uh, events like the breakfast and other folks who are interested in helping us out are very key to our success. Wow, that's amazing. Well, that's really cool to hear. Thank you so much, John. Yeah, thanks for having me. Welcome back to our coverage of day two here at the Royal. One of the most important missions of the fair is to help educate visitors, as well as entertain. And our next segment gives us a little taste of both. And by little, I mean exactly that. I'm here with Heather on day two of the Royal with the miniature horses. Heather, can you tell us a little bit about these little guys? Well, you know what? They're a, a breed that has been man-made, we say, because it's been developed by breeding smaller horses all along. And uh, they are what I call a recreation breed. That uh, their sole purpose is to have fun with and, and enjoy. 
Awesome. And can you tell us a little bit about uh, what it's like caring for these guys? You know, like, does it take less food because they're smaller? You know, stuff like that. Yes. Um, you know, the care is pretty much the same as a large horse, except that less. And so, you know, a, um, a bale of hay, a big round bale will last one miniature quite a few months, whereas uh, a big horse would take one bale per month, perhaps, those big round bales. Um, as far as uh, taking care of them in the winter, people think they might need a, a barn, but they, as long as they have a shed for shelter, um, they're quite fine. They have really, really thick coats in the winter time, and uh, they're quite fine outside. So there's, they're not as much care as the big horse sometimes. Wow, well, what do you know? And you're actually doing a draw to give one of these little guys away, is that correct? We have a, a fundraiser for our club, and so we are selling tickets and each year we actually give a horse away and the one behind us is, is the horse who's going to be given away to a new family this year. Because it's clipped, it can't go at the end of the week, we keep it till the warm weather, weather comes but then the winner is able to take it home. Wow, well what do you know, you could be taking this one home. Thank you so much Heather for giving us some of your time today. welcome. So now we go from the tiniest of horses to the biggest of events here at the Royal. Each evening features world-class show jumping, and tonight is no different, as we get set up for the Manitoba Cup. Riders are going all out for $15,000. Let's go behind the scenes and see what it takes to compete in the main arena. I'm here with Brennan on day two of the Royal with show jumping. Brennan, can you tell us a little bit about how you got into show jumping and how long you've been doing this? Uh, well, my mom ran a uh, horse barn, uh, and I grew up with horses, well, surrounded with, surrounded by horses, sorry. Um, and uh, around six years old, I started riding ponies in uh, in my mom's lesson program, and I got involved with pony club, and uh, then got involved with some bigger uh, jumpers and and I've had a lot of fun continuing to travel across Canada competing with them. Oh, awesome, that's really cool to hear. And uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, sort of the relationship between a horse and rider and how that comes into play? Uh, they get more in tune with the rider, the horse, sorry, and uh, you can, you have a lot more control and you kind of expect certain behaviors uh, and you just kind of get more comfortable with them. Uh, and you, everyone goes through a process when they're getting uh, used to a new horse where they, there might be some miscommunication, but uh, after a few years you develop a more solid relationship and, uh, and can often have a lot more success. Awesome. Can you, uh, can you share with us a little bit about what about show jumping appeals to you and why, what you think it brings to the fair? Uh, I think it's amazing what uh, a a rider can do with a 1200 pound animal and uh, the obstacles that we jump like they end up being pretty high and they're like very quick and uh, I think it's amazing that they, they still do that for us and a lot of them enjoy their job and uh, a lot of them are very enthusiastic when they're jumping and they, they put a lot of effort into it. Wow, it's, it's always an amazing thing to see, like it's, it's, it's a very impressive event for sure. And uh, one last thing, can you just share with us a little bit of the preparation process that goes into show jumping, be it the practice or caring for the horse, that sort of thing? Uh, it's always hard in Manitoba with the winters, and, and this one was not really any exception. Uh, up until March, it was awfully cold, but uh, we there's like clipping involved to keep them comfortable when they're here, and they have to be really fit um, a few weeks out so that they can compete for seven days straight without breaking down or any injuries. And, uh, and keeping going, like jumping high enough and um, so they, they aren't thrown off the deep end into any unexpected situations. Wow, that's really amazing. Thank you so much, Brennan, for giving us some of your time today. Thank you. Those show jumpers really do amaze. They are truly an inspiring event to watch. But there's another attraction here at the fair that involves a little more than just watching. One of the biggest attractions here at the fair is the petting zoo. Children and adults alike will often spend hours with the little animals that are free to play with. And we had a chance to learn a little bit about feeding a baby goat with Terry Lee.
I'm here with Terry Lynn, and she's going to show me how to feed a baby goat here. Uh, this is a week old bottle baby, and so she's getting her breakfast right now. Awesome. Look at that little guy go. <laughs> Come on. How often do you got to feed them in a day? Well, depending on the age, anywhere between three and four times a day. Wow. Yeah. It is what? milk replacer in the bottle, and uh, especially made for baby goats for, uh, to drink from when they don't have a mommy. Wow. I notice it's got that little little pink color to it. It doesn't have a strawberry flavor, does it? No, it doesn't have a <laughs> strawberry flavor, but being here at the fair, we sometimes get a little bit of tummy aches, and so we actually add a little bit of Pepto-Bismol to the milk, and that way they don't get tummy aches when they're at the fair all week. Okay. Well, what do you know? Learn something every day. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Terry Lynn. Not a problem at all. Each and every year, there's unbelievable entertainment for the whole family. One of the most familiar faces is Doodles the Clown. Our Rick Thompson had a chance to catch up with Doodles. Hi, Rick Thompson here at the Royal Manitoba Winter Fair, day number two, and we're having a blast here, uh, and you have definitely got to come up here. If you can't make it today, we're here all week, so come on up, and boy, have I got an exciting guest coming right up. Uh, he just went through there. You probably know him. He's been here for years. He's probably most famous for one particular word. I'll let him say it right now. Unbelievable! If you hear that here at the Royal Manitoba Winter Fair, you'll know who it is, and you want to go over, get a picture with him, an autograph, a hug, whatever you want. He's that kind of guy. Doodles, welcome to the fair. You mean welcome home. This is my second home. I love it. How are you, Rick? <laughs> I'm absolutely great, and you make my day, I gotta Thank say that. You. Uh, you're one of the best, you're probably the best entertainer here, I gotta uh, say that. You know what, you guys always make me feel so loved. Um, I have to tell you, uh, on, a, on a separate note, they know how to find entertainment. I mean, I've gone around to Joy, you know, enjoy. Oh, yeah. They've got an illusionist, they've got a beatboxer with Aaron Matthews, um, who is just crazy, um, and everyone knows him from like all the kids TV shows. Right. And then you've got Craig Douglas, who's been on the Comedy Network. Juggling. Really? The shows are crazy. Yeah. You've got Wolf Chalks, and I, I just love the entertainment. But I'm not going to lie to you, the food. <laughs> the food is unbelievable. There's no question. The food. It doesn't matter where you go up here, down or below, wherever. Barn bar. Oh this yeah. This is for eating mini donuts. I'm the world champion. You must be. You got three of them. Yes, three years in a row. <laughs> Well, somebody's got to do it. It might as well be you, right? Unbelievable. Huh? Do you ever wonder why there's a hole in a donut? No, I never knew. Why is there a hole in the donut? So they can have tidbits? Oh! Uh, uh, boom, boom. Unbelievable! I knew you'd like that one. Listen, I heard a little rumor when I was downstairs today that uh, you were on a show and uh, something happened to your trousers. Is that uh, is that true? Oh! <laughs> Just a rumor I heard. Is there any, any truth to that? No, I was doing a, uh, a live theater show. Uh, we took it all around the world. Okay. And there's a scene where I do some uh, boxing with a dad. Oh, and yeah. at the end, I take a bow, and my uh, clown pants would fall to the ground. <laughs> uh, but it didn't go right away, and he tried to help me. And, and it wasn't a pretty sight. No, it all worked out. Uh, no, everything worked out great. I think it was part of the show anyway, right? It was right? part of the show. Uh, well, you know, rumors get around at this place, I tell you. It's, it's a good rumor. 13 acres of building here, but it gets around, eh? Yeah. It's good to have you here. How was your winter? It was great. Do you know that I ordered this weather? Because wherever I am, um, I check the weather in Brandon. Great. And you guys deserve beautiful weather now. And this week is going to be truly unbelievable. I have a lot of friends and family living here, and I have friends in Winnipeg that are all coming out. Yeah, the drive's great. Exactly. Um, so I think it's going to be a great, great royal. Well, it's always great because you're here and uh, the entertainment that goes on. Where where can we catch you? If somebody wants to catch your show, uh, where are you located this year? Um, I'm doing three shows a day in the amphitheater, and in between, I'm wandering. You'll see me in the halls. You'll see me over visiting the Wolf Jocks. Uh, you'll see me hanging out with the Magic of Aaron Matthews. Uh, I'm everywhere. Excellent. Should mention that that amphitheater is sponsored by Manitoba Hydro, and we thank them for their sponsorship. It really uh, makes that a way better facility. So, Yay, uh, Manitoba Hydro! <laughs> so you're uh, touring around the building, you're having a lot of fun. Uh, anybody you've seen this year, uh, anybody you want to say hi to? A little? Yeah, um, when I came for the breakfast to do a little show, right. um, I just everyone was coming up to me, hi doodles, and it didn't matter if they were, you know, my, my friend's grandfather, grandmother, it was just been amazing. Like I, I really feel like I'm home again. So thank you to everybody out there for making me always feel special. And I do love Brandon and the surrounding area. 
Well, it's not hard to make you feel special because you are special, a special special guy to have here at our fair. We really appreciate having you here. So, again, one more time, where can we catch your show again? Unbelievable. The amphitheater, usually three times a day. Make sure you get out here and have a great time. If you need to check it out, uh, pick up one of these schedules here. You can find them all over the building. It'll tell you exactly where my friend Doodles the Clown is uh, operating out of. It is mostly in the Manitoba Hydro Amphitheater. You maybe want to check it out. Come on down. It's only day two. We got a lot more fun going on here, Doodles. Always a pleasure. Thank you. And have an unbelievable time here at the Royal. And as they say, have an unbelievable day. Doodles is around all week, along with all of the other great entertainment here at the Keystone Center. Please be sure to get to West Toba Place tonight for the evening show. As we mentioned, the Manitoba Cup is the feature show jumping event tonight. Ladies barrel racing, the calf scramble, wolf jocks, canine all-stars, heavy horses, and more. The opening ceremonies will kick things off at 6.30 p.m., so there's still time to get to the show. That's all the time we have for today, but we will be back here tomorrow on WCG-TV at 5.30 p.m. with our Day 3 coverage of the Royal Manitoba Winter Fair. I'm Marshall Littlefield, and on behalf of Rick Thompson and our entire production team, thanks for watching, and we'll see you at the fair. Good night.